Hey guys, for a long time I've been planning to buy a car battery tester. Until it was needed, I have been putting the buy aside until the last moment. And the time finally has come when one of my cars had started to have problems with the battery. I decided to buy Conway KW870. As the description says, it has a pressure measurement, internal resistance, starting current, and a capacity of the battery. Also, the device has an OBD scanner for petrol engines and diesel. We can read out and erase mistakes in it. It has a reading car parameters and sensor testing. After taking it out of the box, we can see that the device is put in a pretty and neat case. The wires look solid and are pretty much elastic. In the set, we will also find a wire for sending data to the computer. Of course, the set couldn't come without a small leaflet with models that Conway has got in their offer and an instruction manual. The appearance and the execution, in my opinion, are on a pretty good level. Buttons are made from rubber and the service socket is hid underneath the case, which gives us a more confident and stable grip of the device. And also it gives us the protection from it being damaged after a fall. Okay, let's connect the tester to our battery. The first battery is my old AGM. After connecting the clamps the device is turning on, I'd say even quite fast. In the option of choosing the language, let's not expect the most perfect translation. In my opinion, the most understandable language is English. We click on car battery, then out of vehicle. And lastly, we choose the battery that we have, which is AGM flat plate. According to the EN norm, it should have the capacity of 680 ampere. We have to remember that the starting electricity, 680 ampere, according to the EN norm, will be way higher than 680 ampere, according to DIN, and it will be lower than the same parameter in the SAE norm. In the internet, you can find the correct conversion tables. We can see that the tester has shown us the resistance of the battery, the starting ability, and the tension. The chart above informs us about the efficiency level of the battery and also about the condition of charging. Let's get to the car. The battery installed in the car here is a acidic battery, 540 ampere, according to the EN norm. Firstly, let's check the level of charging and the condition of our battery. We click on in vehicle, then battery test. It asks us to turn on the lights for about 10 seconds and then to turn them off. We click OK. We choose the norm of our battery, which is EN for me. We then choose 540 ampere and click on OK. Just like before, we can see all the parameters of the battery. My car battery is charged to 49% and has 79% efficiency. It's noticeable that the resistance is too high and also has 12.2 volts so it has to be charged. Mostly my car moves at small distances, which exhausts the battery a lot and it doesn't keep up to charge it, especially during winter. Another measurement that we can do with this device is the cranking test. Again, we choose in vehicle, then cranking test. It asks us now to turn off the engine before pressing OK, once again before entering the test. The tester asks us to turn on the engine. I put my ass into the car and turn it on. After a moment, we get the score. Our turning on time is 853 milliseconds. The maximum current is 14.1 volts. The minimal fall is 8.45 volts. Another thing that we can check is the charging of alternator. We get into the menu, car battery, in vehicle, charging test. The device asks us to keep the minimal 2,500 revolutions for 10 seconds and then click OK. We put our ass in the car 
and increase the revolutions. Our charging is 14.06 volts with the weight of the lights and radio turned on, and the blowing also turned on. I decided to dismantle the battery and connect it to the charger to check the cranking test once more, if it would be better than before. I didn't charge it to the maximum level. I will get it done later on. After about two hours, the battery connected to the charger is almost fully charged, and we already can see the difference. The efficiency increased to 85%, and the charging is on 100%. The tension of the battery also increased from 12.2 volts to 13.23 volts. Let's do the cranking test again. The maximal tension and also the minimal is comparable to the past measurement. However, the cranking time is shorter by half and smoother. Let's connect the cable to OBD. And here, in my opinion, the pros are ending. I connect it to a couple of cars, different type, and it didn't detect any problems despite them being there. It didn't detect the problem of the air pillow in my Mazda. In Audi, there was a damaged temperature sensor which it also didn't detect. And of course, the translation which I was talking about at the start of the video, it's very weak. You have to think about what is written there and what is its purpose. Maybe there has to get an upgrade done which will make the device work better. However, we can check parameters in the real time, like the revolutions of the engine, the throttle opening state, the charge and the air temperature, the reaction to the gas pedal, and many different parameters during the work of the car. We can also read VIN, CIN, and CVN. In my opinion, as a car battery, cranking check, and the charging battery tester, it's good. I would think of OBD as the additional tester for some kind of parameters. The quality of the device is good, but everyone has to ask themselves if it's worth it. For comparison, the cheaper models of Conway are able to do the same, and. OBD is more like a gadget in this model. 